Th this might be the best metal bass player I've ever seen. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Lowen University, and this week I'm taking on another request I've seen tons of times, even on my earliest videos in this series. That is for bassist Dominic Forrest LaPointe, who used to play for Beyond Creation, and I'm going to do another Beyond Creation video featuring their newer player soon. But for now, Dominic has moved on to the band First Fragment. I'm going to be reacting and analyzing his playthrough of Gula off of the album Dazane, I believe that's called. This is a band out of Quebec, so I am now three for three in a row of Canadian heavy bands. This is off of their newest record again, Dazane. Let's jump in. This is Gula, bass playthrough. Gula. <laughs> Lord. Sounds like we're in F sharp. I want to go back and hear that tone by itself, and then we'll kind of jump back. Let's see, I'm at 40 seconds, so this was here. It was so woody sounding, so just pure. It just sounded like the sound of wood. I know that's Warwick's slogan, but Fretless always just has that kind of vocal expressiveness that you can't get on a fretted bass. And this is going to make me want to get my Fretless, or get a Fretless again. I'm such an idiot for selling mine. Let's hear that real quick. That's ah, so cool. All right, jumping back to 40. Real quick, I want you to watch at how efficient his technique is. There is no wasted motion. Another player that comes to mind that kind of is like that for me, which I looked up to a lot when I watched, was Sean Malone, the late Sean Malone, rest in peace, who played with Cynic and a bunch of other bands. It's like when you watch him play, the fretting hand kind of looks like this. He's playing fast. He's playing all over the place, but there's it's hard to see any movement. That's really important playing these really technical, precise, fast things because if you you know you play a scale like this, you know your fingers are flying out here. That's that much more space you have to cover to come back, and you're usually going to go really fast to get them back, and it's going to really mess with your tone and just your control on the fretboard. So when you watch him play, it's so efficient. There's such little movement, no wasted movement. Super important. Let's keep going. Plucking hand, I almost said right hand technique. He's playing lefty, I suppose. So forgive me if I say that again. His plucking hand technique is very interesting. You know, if you watch my technique, which is pretty standard among other bass players, it's kind of perpendicular to the strings. So if I were to ascend, that's how my technique looks and a lot of other bass players. But he's kind of doing this tilting the hand thing which it kind of changes the axis of attack on the plucking hand, allows you to skip strings. If you keep your hand completely perpendicular and try to skip an octave, you have to, it kind of looks like this. Whereas if you turn your hand, you can just go kind of more like picking on a guitar. Notice my wrist does not have to move. This allows him the freedom to jump all over the fretboard across these six strings. Again, no wasted movement, very important. It's a little bit of movement, but not much. Whoa, golly. I'm going to go back about 10 seconds and just watch his index, middle, and ring plucking fingers. They're kind of on different strings. That's really interesting. It's like almost like finger picking where you dedicate a finger to each string. Um, it's going by so fast. Uh, I don't want to slow it down per se. Well, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and slow it down because I, I definitely want to kind of see what's happening there. Let's see if I can catch it. Mm -hmm. 
normally it sounds terrible when you slow it down. That actually sounds kind of groovy. <laughs> kind of interesting. All right, let's jump back. So it, it appears even slowed down that a dedicated fingers for each string when he's doing those like multi-string passages, very kind of arpeggio shapes. Um, and just, again, tilting his hand like that seems to allow him the efficiency to make that happen. Right there. Perfect example. Look how effortlessly he can go between strings there, up and down, going from the E string all the way up to the D and G strings. Don't go, don't go, don't go. Also, his fretting technique, wrist angle perfection. Lap. Okay. You don't see slap on fretless a lot. You really don't. At least I don't. A key thing about fretless too, you can really like tail off those notes and kind of make them last longer than they really do. Even when starting fretting another note, you can kind of trail off. And it allows that vocal characteristic of the fretless bass to kind of be present. And when the rest of the mix is so... When you have that kind of just very grid pattern, those like lingering sliding fretless notes kind of glue it all together and kind of pop out more because everything is so just on, off, on, off with the... Glist, like glissando, I guess is the term, of course. Sliding, it just kind of glues all that precision together and adds a really soft element. I, you know, this whole fretless bass and like really technical death, tech metal music, I find to be super smart. It cuts through. And, you know, playing this fast on a fretted instrument, you're going to get a lot of... <laughs> this is kind of void of that. It's, it's almost like a contrast to how chuggy everything sounds. I want to comment on the slap too. Again, I have not personally seen a lot of slap on a fretless bass. I think it can sound kind of thuddy because there's no like fret attack to kind of hit, but that kind of makes it more homogenous with the rest of the finger style technique. So it's really cool, especially for this kind of syncopated broken down part. I'm going to keep going. Really cool. Some double stops here, really nice. Down to a shuffle now. Triplet feel. That's kind of a, a Getty Lee-ish thing there, you know, kind of plucking, plucking the chords. I've seen him do that a few times. It's gone by really fast. Another thing, I wonder if this guy is classically trained or, you know, has just gone through a more academic approach to learning a fretted instrument. You could start it on guitar, classical guitar, I'm not sure. I know you guys will know the answer, so let me know. But I want to comment on the classical position. Any real official kind of institution, they're going to at least mention something like this. My first teacher did. It's a great way to 
honestly mimic standing playing, but you'll kind of notice putting the guitar between allows a very comfortable ergonomic position for your fretting hand, plucking hand, I'm sorry. You know, you're not kind of stuck over here like us rock bass players do, but it also allows this very even plane for your fretting hand. And he has a very intense wrist angle, but it's perfect. Like he would not get an injury from that. You're going to get a wrist injury hanging your bass really low, playing more uh, parallel to the ground. So, you know, I spent a lot of time playing like this when I first started. Obviously, we all gravitated toward the rock thing, just mm -hmm. throwing it over this, <laughs> this thigh here. But that position is extremely efficient. You have kind of unhindered access to the whole fretboard. So you can kind of really get up in here and really up here. I don't know. It's very comfortable. You'll see a lot of guitar players do this. So I just wonder if he has some sort of background that might have, you know, been doing that very early on. Let's keep going. On the tapping now. Wow. A little bit of a key change there. He's kind of doing the eruption style pattern there. Eruption referring to Van Halen, of course. Three notes. You know, he's kind of moving the, the pivot pull-off point, which would be your index finger. You got to be precise on a fretless as well. And man, the tone again contrasts with everything else. The fretless cuts through all of the really heaviness of the guitars, the really tight da -da 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 kind of drums. I, I really like this. Uh, it's through composed sounding to me, which just basically means, you know, a normal structure for a song might be A, B, A, B, C. This is like A, B, D, C. A. <laughs> This is like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and that's the, that's the whole song. It's just kind of like a one-way street. There's not a lot of repeating riffs, and it, it can be really tough to kind of catch on to some sort of structure. But again, you know, some of the bands I've played through have had songs like that. It's a lot to remember is kind of what I'm trying to get at, which makes this even more impressive. Um, I don't really hear a lot of repeating. I hear some variations on previous riffs, but, you know, I talk a lot about stamina in the Iron Maiden video I did, you know, Steve Harris just having relentless stamina, just no stops. And this kind of reminds me of that beast of a player, beast of a player, especially on fretless blows my mind. That's cool progression. Kind of neoclassical. Important thing, when you go play lower on a bass, try to gravitate back toward the bridge pickup. You know, if you're playing on the higher string, sometimes I rest and play over the neck pickup, maybe in between. And I, I've tried to get a pseudo fretless tone here. Obviously not gonna sound like that with frets. But sometimes I've noticed you get a lot more uniformity with the notes when, as you get lower, you kind of bring it back to the bridge pickup because it's going to be very bass heavy over the neck pickup on a low string. But you get down here. See how it has more like, ta -ta -ta, it's more defined. He's exactly doing that. You'll notice he kind of has this diagonal plane, which he goes across with the plucking hand. He kind of goes a little more toward the neck pickup when he plucks up higher and then kind of brings it back down. And when he's on the low string, he's kind of over that bridge pickup just to really eliminate that woofy bass that kind of in, um, hinders the notes from really speaking down that low. That's really important. You kind of watch him do it. Let me go back a couple seconds. You can kind of see that in action. Watch, he kind of goes diagonally here. Down on the bridge pickup, see he moves up. It's kind of going diagonal.
right back to it. No wasted motion. Wow, so I had just got done saying that he kind of sticks to that diagonal pattern, plucking near the bridge pickup on the lower notes and then plucking over the neck pickup for the higher notes, but he kind of reversed it on me there at the end. So there may be an extra layer to that where he's adjusting the tone of how he's plucking based on the passage of the song, which is something I do, a lot of bass players do, because you really have a lot of tonal control simply over where your hand placement is. Well-documented stuff. A lot of people wonder about tone, and it's a lot of it is in the hands, and especially the fullness of a note. You're going to get a lot more full of a note playing kind of over the neck pickup. Whereas if I move my hand just a few inches over here to the bridge pickup, it's going to change the tone a lot. And as bass players, we're consciously thinking about if I'm in a chorus and I want a really full driving eighth note thing, I'm kind of I want that fuller note over the neck pickup, but if it's more of a technical passage or a little run, you might gravitate toward the bridge a little bit. So I'm sure there's some layered nuance there to how he's approaching that, but nonetheless, th this might be the best metal bass player I've ever seen, uh, just all over the place. He's like playing lead bass so much of the time. There's so many different techniques switching seamlessly between tapping, but I think the thing that stuck out to me about his playing is just how masterful and efficient it is. It's just no wasted motion. It's like every movement is intentional. The fingers are very relaxed, and it goes to show you that relaxation, even in very heavy music, is essential to not only keeping your stamina, but to sounding good, making the notes sound even, and tone really is in the hands for things like this. This was a great watch. I did my best. There's so much going by, and I hope I caught everything. I'd love to check out another first fragment or go back to some older Beyond Creation. Again, I want to check out the new basis in Beyond Creation as well. But thank you for the recommendation. I appreciate all of these. I've seen his name pop up quite a lot. Um, but give me a thumbs up, comment what you'd like to see next, and make sure you're subscribed. I'm going to go rest. That was a very mentally <laughs> exhausting to watch. And... Hats off to this guy. He's an amazing player. Thanks so much. Cheers, and we will see you next week.